I want to do a quick video on how to transplant uh, seedlings. You can start probably 10 or 15 plants in a little pot like this. Now these plants have been exposed to full sun and uh, they've been out in the sun for a while now, probably about a week. And the dirt's kind of starting to dry out. And you'll notice that if you just start to kind of break apart the the clod a little bit. I don't have it too moist. If I have it too moist, all the dirt will come off. But you just kind of get them until they start to separate. And you'll notice you kind of have this little tiny root ball. So what I like to do from there is just, I'll just do one actually right here. Poke a big hole, grab him by the seed leaf, and drop him, you know, down in there. And then, you know, with the tomatoes, of course, you can you can plant them much deeper than the uh, than just the root base, and all these little hairs will turn into roots. And then from here, they'll go into the shade for a couple days, and then back out into full sun, and they'll start taking off into plants. And show you these plants here were done the same way, and they're approximately eight weeks old or something like that or these other ones over here are only about two weeks old but we've just been now getting full sun because we're up here in Utah and you know we don't get the advantage of the growth that's just starting to warm up we've been in cold days and nights for quite a time anyway so there's the what they'll end up turning into just show you the size of the stock on these now these are ready to go on the ground and what I'll do is I'll pluck uh, each of these small little you can see that those seed leaves will just get plucked off and I'll actually bury it about that deep into the ground. And they'll go to root. And after they go to root, you'll get something like this over here. These guys have been in the ground for about um, a week now. And they're the same size as those ones in the pot. And if you look how much bigger these are already getting, they're just growing. So... And I had no transplant shock. I've uh, been looking at LDS Prepper's uh, website, and he's been doing the mint leader gardening, and I thought, oh, that looks like it would work good. So we tried it out, and it's working awesome. I've, you know, mixed up the beds. I didn't do the sawdust and the straw. We did the, uh, uh, the perlite, the sand, and the peat moss mixture, just because that's what was available, you know, in our local store. And it's working out well. We just did our first weekly fertilize along here. These were some celebrity tomatoes that <clears throat> made it for my first crop. I uh, had a good crop going in January and I got the wrong dirt and killed all my seedlings. These were the surviving ones of the first crop. So next year when we plant everything out here, um, it will all hopefully be about this big. And you know, we've been out here for a week. I haven't seen any sick plants. There's one plant right here. He looks like he's a little bit unhappy, but that's a Roma tomato. The rest of these are, well, these big ones are celebrities, and these other ones that are on their way are all beefsteak. So it seems to be working um, pretty well. There was no shock when we put them in the ground. They just went in and kept right on growing because the growing media that I put the seedlings in was the same exact media they were transplanted into. Um, this bed is 18 inches wide. Actually, it's 21 from outside edge of wood to outside edge of wood and it's uh, two eight footer so it's uh, 16 feet long and then these are also uncut uh, the 92 and 5 8 studs they were a little cheaper than 2 by 4 and we came in two inches from the end and drilled a three quarter hole so we could run half inch electrical conduit through them and when we went to set it up there's three inch grabber screws three or four of them around each base so fairly simple setup not exactly the same as the mitt leader T-frame, but our ground here is so hard to go and put something in the ground 12 inches. I mean, we'd be with a pickaxe for a day to get a couple of holes around here. Just got bad dirt, kind of on a rocky hillside. Anyways, um, garden's doing well. The Definitely the this T-frame structure, we're going to grow everything vine style up these ropes. So I've got them spaced about... Uh, 12 inches stem to stem, and I came back 6 inches sidewall to stem um, 
from the end. And that gives me six inches on each end also. Anyways, we'll see where these guys go over the next couple weeks. I'm pretty excited with everything's working well. <clears throat> and we'll just kind of expand a little bit and get two or three more trenches out here in the yard. I put the pumpkins in, growing in the kind of that mitt leader type formula. And I put them in the ground. And I put them in, this one is in a mitt leader formula. No shock. This one, uh, miracle Grow, And it looks okay. This one... Miracle Grow, pretty unhappy. That's the Miracle Grow potting mix that we had bought, and this one's also in Miracle Grow. So, you know, the Miracle Grow did pretty good, but we, it looks like maybe we're going to lose one of the pumpkins, which is to be expected. But uh, the ratio of transplant on the average is still higher, and pumpkin roots are kind of sensitive. So, you know, we'll we'll we keep them wet and watered every day, but uh, hopefully this will turn into a pretty good sized patch. So anyways, there's the, the garden update. I'll show you um, what else we have out here. This has done really well. We put uh, couldn't grow anything in the soil last year, so I bought a bag of this stuff called Happy Frog, and it said, throw it in the soil, stand back, and watch it grow. And that's kind of what it's been this year. I haven't fertilized any of this. We've got really nice heads. I overseeded it and now that it's starting to get hot we're actually pulling whole heads out of the ground to start eating them before it goes bad but we've trimmed each of these rows back down to almost nothing i think three times now and now we're in the process of thinning heads and then this is all uh, spinach and so we with all of our plants we haven't really thinned anything we've just kind of cut them down and then the other plants grow out and take the place and so when it gets watered or it rains within one to two days we're back to a whole head of lettuce right now so it's pretty exciting process and we're getting a few weeds in here but not too many that's a oh i thought that was a weed that's actually a well a radish i guess he was ready to come out of the ground so we got carrots that are seeded in with the radishes and now that the radishes are ready to harvest we'll start uh, giving the carrots the sunlight and i got a row of carrots over here coming up still got onions and when I was seeding I had a few heads of butter crunch that just kind of blew and that's a whole head of butter crunch that we just haven't got to yet and the peas these are the little fiberglass stakes and we threw the peas out when there was snow on the ground and it just uh, it just filled right in and we're just running like some kite string on here and they're starting to find the string and starting to work their way up now so anyways there's our our garden update we're going to do squash in that big box and uh, beans, and when we get more stuff going, I'll, I'll post it up. So anyways, I'd look up the mitt leader method and, um, and try it out. This is pretty impressive. It's working really well so far. And just by comparison, if you look at the, the stems on these plants and how healthy they are and how big they are, here's another plant that's the same age that's in dirt. Just not as big. They started the same time, they're the same plants. He was put in dirt to start out with as a seedling. He went back into dirt as his, I guess you could call that toddler, I don't know. And uh, you can see the difference in the growth. So definitely something to this, making sure all the plants are getting the nutrients. And one more thing too, on that bell of happy frog stuff, it does have all the essential micronutrients that the mitt leader formula has so it, i think that's why we've had such a a successful cold weather crop even though the cold weather is starting to come to an end we're getting in the 80s now so anyways thanks for watching if you have any uh, questions or ideas um, please feel free to you know send me an email i i work a lot so you know it takes me a while to get back to questions sorry about that for people asking stuff but anyways, uh, good luck to you guys in your gardening. Thanks for watching.